Priority Pass is one of the world's largest networks of airline lounges. Now, no one said they were that amazing to begin with, but have they just been kind of ruined? Today, we're going to talk about that. My name is Sean, and I'm here with my co-host. Hi, everyone. I'm Sherwin on the Credit Card BS podcast today. We're going to talk about is Priority Pass ruined with a bunch of the recent changes we've seen from credit card issuers. Before we d dive right in, let's first talk about what is Priority Pass and how does one get it? Sean? So Priority Pass, as I said, is a network of airline lounges, and you can either get it the trash way of purchasing a membership directly from them, don't do that, or by having a premium tier credit card, which provides you the membership as a benefit of the card. And if you have the unlimited membership, you can go to any of these Priority Pass lounges, show them your airline ticket, and then have them scan the card. And usually you can bring in between one to two guests uh, extra with you, even if they don't have a membership. And so it's a place to, you know, hang, you can have a lounge to hang out, have some food, some drinks, uh, waiting before your flight instead of just sitting in the terminal with nothing to do. Now, one of the biggest misconceptions about Priority Pass is that they're all the same. After all, you know, once you get the Priority Pass membership from the car, from a credit card, they email or they mail you that Priority Pass card and they literally all look the same. And you'll be surprised that to know that different credit cards give slightly different Priority Pass memberships. And even though credit card A and credit card B uh, both have Priority Pass and they mail you a card that literally physically looks identical, they can have different perks. One of those perks we're going to kind of talk about today is Priority Pass restaurants. And historically, it used to be that most Priority Pass memberships offer this, but slowly most of the credit card issuers have been chipping away at this benefit. Sean, why don't you explain what Priority Pass restaurants is and how one could use it? Yeah, so there's the difference between the Priority Pass lounge and the restaurant. The lounge is, as I described before, it's a place to, you know, hang out. There's free food, free drinks, uh, you know, pl like places to sit and stuff like that before your flight. And, you know, it's fine, but usually the food offerings in Priority Pass lounges are going to be pretty mid, right? We're talking like snacks, small bites, nothing fully extensive. Well, if you had a Priority Pass membership with Priority Pass lounge access, there would be certain fully fledged air like airport restaurants that would be a partner partnership with your Priority Pass membership that you could go into the restaurant, order off the menu, whatever you like pretty much, and have a set dollar amount credit towards your bill usually about like $28 a guest, something like that. It was fairly, you know, substantial per guest. And so that way you could have an actual like better food selection, something more substantial to eat a real meal before your flight versus, you know, kind of these snacks and small bites that you would see at the typical Priority Pass lounge. Yeah, and you could actually get quite a bit of value from a visit there, uh, you know. $28 a person, you know, if you can bring that one guest, it's $56, if I recall correctly, which, you know, you know, I mean, airport food is yeah. overpriced, but you yeah. can still get a pretty good meal out of that. Uh, do well, know that you have to tip because it does include tip, but go ahead. I was going to also say, and what some restaurants would do, because they don't really care, right? They're getting paid anyways. If you had another person, let's say a person A and person B go, I, person A, have me and a guest. And then person B also has them and me. And so they'd scan both cards and give you double the credit. So you could actually have, not it was restaurant dependent on if this works, but you could actually have a pretty like large credit to spend if you and your friend both had memberships. And so that was a really cool thing. You could have like a full buffet pretty much. Yeah, I mean, I've never tried that tactic myself, but I, you know, I do know that like in the same trip, at the airport, if the airport has multiple party pass restaurants, you could potentially hit up multiple restaurants and get multiple meals. But anyway, so this is a pretty cool perk. You can get a lot of value. Obviously, it probably costs party pass quite a bit of money to subsidize it. And therefore, the credit card issuers probably have to pay more for it. So slowly over the years, many credit card issuers have gotten rid of this benefit. Uh, most notably, Amex hasn't had it for a while now. Uh, Capital One Venture X used to have it when they launched, and that was like a great thing with their party pass, especially be with free authorized users. Uh, they got rid of it, and then the Venture X business still had it. They got rid of it recently, and now, you know, last straw is uh, Chase is pulling out next month at the time of recording. I'm sure by the time this is out, uh, 
the Chase Party Pass will, will be no longer. And that includes both the Sapphire Reserve as well as the Ritz Carlton card. So we're left with very few options for restaurant access. And I mean, to put this into perspective, it's a, I would say it's a big loss if you were at particular airports where the lounges really aren't good. For example, SFO Airport, San Francisco, certain terminals, there's not even any party pass lounge you can go to. Uh, I mean, there are Centurion Lounge and United Clubs, but your only party pass options are like the restaurants. So you're almost left without any benefit of having party pass if that's like your main airport. Um, so Sean, how big of a loss is this in your mind? As you said, it depends on the airports you are at. Here's the thing for me. I have not been to a single Priority Pass Lounge that I have actually been somewhat like impressed with. The best they've been are like passable. I have even in like Asia, I have never gone to one where I was like, wow, this is awesome, right? This is a really cool lounge. I want to, I'm like, you know, I should get here early for this. Never once. So not, and having a restaurant was nice because it's like you could get real food. I know it's like not the best quality. It's airport food. I get that. But it's something, it was like actual, like a meal versus at any priority pass. It's all going to just be like snacks and just, it's all, there's nothing that good. And so to me, it's a pretty big loss because that was like one of the things I was like, okay, you know, at least at some places I could get an actual like legitimate benefit. And it also to, to, to clarify as well, we're talking about priority pass restaurants, but there's also like included in that restaurant membership, it was really priority pass experiences. So on top of the restaurant access, there was also access to non-priority, non-lounge experiences. So such as like Gameway in LAX, where you could like hang out and play games. I never used that, but you could, I ran in and grabbed like a chocolate bar or something. Like you could get a snack and a chocolate bar included in it. I actually went there at the Charlotte airport during a layover once. It's, it's a pretty cool concept, but you have it's to nice. have the it's right party pass for it. Yeah. Exactly. You needed one with restaurant access or, you know, one that had the experience access and like, the B Relax Spa at the Southwest Terminal, where you could go get a free spa treatment. Yeah, you had to tip, but like it was still pretty cheap. And it was just nice to have other things to do. Whereas like at a lounge like where LAX is, I don't know if there's any priority pass lounges, like lounges at that are open at LAX. I don't even think there's a single one. Whereas there were a couple of experience, you know, ones to have. Yes. So to me, it's a huge loss. There's also minute suites as an experience. So some airports have these like private little rooms. You can sort of book for an hour um, and a party pass would cover like an hour of it. So that was pretty cool. So yeah, those are also lost. I think, I mean, I would say Chase pulling out of it is like pretty shocking to me, actually more so than Capital. Because like Capital One, you know, the VentureX already pays for itself and has like the free authorized users. And you know, that was great. I mean, it sucked that they got rid of restaurant access, but like it's overall still like such a solid card. I mean, Amex not having restaurants is not great either, but they have their own Centurion lounges and stuff, right? You know, Chase Sapphire Reserve, we're literally looking at a card that's a 550 annual fee. They charge money for each authorized user. Um, we're talking about a card that only has a $300 travel credit, so you're paying a 250 effective annual fee. And come and now their party pass is reduced to essentially the most basic one. I think that from that holistic perspective, it severely weakens the value proposition of the card for Chase Sapphire Reserve. Because to me, the value of Sapphire Reserve is not just whether they have party pass, but whether their party pass is differentiable from other cheaper alternative credit cards that come with party pass. And I think they just really lost the one remaining edge they had on their card. I don't know. What do you think, Sean? I know a hundred percent. That was my, like my exact thought process because I was someone that like for a while, once the venture X personal got rid of party pass, I was like, damn it. Okay. Well, how am I going to get access? Pass or party, 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 party pass, pass restaurants. Yeah. Yes. The restaurants, they still have the standard membership, but I was like, how am I going to get access to this? And I'm like, okay, the Sapphire reserve. It's not great, but look, if you know, if you, get the credit and add me as an authorized user. And, you know, I, I could make this work because of that access. And then, it, but it was still really tough. I was still like, I don't know. With this, I have lost all interest 
in the Sapphire Reserve. I, I don't see, other than a couple of like narrow use cases, why I would want that card anymore. And that yeah. is something that's really a shame because I think that was something, as you said, it really made it stand out and it made Chase's priority passes much more interesting than the competitors. And now it's like, there's so few options that have it. So why don't we talk about, you know, why don't we talk about the options that people have if they do want access to priority pass restaurants? Uh, yes. But before that, I, I did want to mention something really quickly, if that's okay. And that there is still a value in the Chase party pass that's worth talking about is that Chase is launching their new brand of lounges, the Chase Sapphire lounges. From what I've seen, they look very nice, much better food, much better ambiance than the typical party pass lounge. And how it works is if you have a regular old party pass membership, you only get one visit, no guests per year for free. But if you want unlimited access with two guests, you need one of the Chase um, credit cards, Chase party passes, so one through the Sapphire Reserve or Ritz Carlton. So, I mean, there's still only a very few of these because it's like a new network. But I would say, like, if you uh, fly off and out of an airport that has a Chase Sapphire Lounge and that's something you enjoy, I could see the argument of getting Sapphire Reserve or better yet, the Ritz Carlton card, in my opinion. Um, to gain access to that. But other than that, again, as Sean and I have said, uh, the Chase Party Pass really doesn't stand out anymore. I mean, heck, even Capital One is also launching their own lounge system. I, you know, I hope it gets bigger. And again, the only way you can get through to those is with the Venture X card and not with any old Party Pass. So I think we might be seeing a trend, honestly, away from like these general party pass memberships being valuable and more toward like issuer specific like the amex lounges the capital one lounges chase lounges and i'll say that might be a good thing in terms of reducing over overcrowding and increasing the quality of the lounges yeah that makes sense i agree with that you know like the centurion lounges i've been to have all been pretty nice good food haven't i did actually visit yeah one chase sapphire lounge it was, it was definitely the best priority pass lounge i've ever been to um, haven't done a Capital One lounge yet, but yeah, all the like bank specific lounges have all been pretty good. And I think it's because also like they kind of have to protect their brand a bit more than these, you know, third party priority pass lounges. So I think that is something that's pretty nice. Yes. And just, just the fact that fewer people have access to yeah. it just allows them to provide better quality. So now let's talk about the thing you mentioned. So let's say you still want the restaurant access. What are your options now that Chase, American Express, Capital One have all extinguished it from their programs? Um, if you have to city prestige, which not available to new applicants, not available for product change either, but if you still have to city prestige uh, at the time of this recording, they still have restaurant access. So uh, pat yourself on the back if you have that card <laughs> or apply for it back then. Uh, we'll see if City does the relaunch of the new high tier card, but yet to be seen. Um, the other option, and this one I actually like, is my personal current strategy, is to get the U.S. Bank Altitude Reserve. Now, the, the U.S. Bank Altitude Reserve Party Pass is very different from the other ones in that it's not an unlimited use. Uh, you only get eight visits per year, and each guest visit counts as one. So if me and another person go to use party pass that will count as two visits out of my eight allocated for the year but the key is um the alto reserve party pass does include restaurants um and that's important distinction for it because i have you yeah. know the amex capital one party pass so i'm going to use those unlimited passes for my lounges and then eight times a year um i can use my alto reserve for restaurants i, I mean i think that's a fair compromise for me personally, because realistically, I'm not going to use restaurants more than eight times a year with my travel habits. Or I guess it's more like four times if I'm bringing a guest each. Because if you're charging the $56 twice of 28, uh, that would count as two visits. Uh, I also use that to go to the Gameway. Thing. I don't know if that was the best value, but it, it was worth checking out. And you got a free drink and snack. But yeah, yeah, I think the Altitude Reserve is probably the way to go. There are other obscure cards that come with Party Pass restaurant access that you can look into, but I'm not really going to go through those because it's probably not going to apply to 
percent of people watching this. Um, Sean, thoughts on this strategy? Yeah, I think it's a solid strategy. I mean, if you can get a, I think the biggest difficulty is getting approved for a U.S. bank card. But if you can manage that, and if you get approved for the altitude reserve, then yeah, that's definitely a really good strategy, uh, especially given how that card is, you know, very very easy to justify long term. Uh, yeah, that yeah, not much more to say. Great. So I think that does it pretty well for us today on our episode on is Party Pass ruined? What do you think is Party Pass ruined? Leave a comment in the. Uh, leave a comment down below and give this video a like. If you enjoyed it, uh, please consider subscribing. It really helps us out. Um, if you're interested in applying for a card, whether for priority pass or for different reasons, please consider using one of the links in the description below. It greatly helps us out. And Sean, why don't you plug our Discord? Yes, yeah, so if you want to connect with an elite group of award travelers and credit card enthusiasts entirely for free, check out the Traveling Discord group at the link in the description. You will learn a ton, I promise you. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next week.